Okay, so this is a segment about how we convert between the weight fraction and the atom fraction of different elements that are within an alloy. So usually uh, alloys will be specified in terms of the weight fraction, how much of each alloying element there is in it by weight. Other times we want to know about the atoms. Chemistry, all the physics happens with the number of atoms that are in an alloy, and quite often those can be two quite different numbers. So it's important to be able to know how to convert between the two. Um, so all we're doing here is we're going to do a bit of maths to persuade ourselves that we can do that, and then we'll introduce uh, the data book which will tell us uh, that we don't need to remember formulae. So if we consider a, a bucket of, of an alloy, with lots of different atoms in, different colored balls. Uh, this bucket has some black balls um, and some red balls. And if we know the number fraction, the atom fraction of each, then we can consider how much they weigh, and that's what we're gonna do now. So we'll take a bucket with n atoms in it. And if it's got n atoms in it, then that's, uh, we can multiply by the uh, fraction by number um, so if we say the fraction by number is the composition by atom percent of species X, red or black in this case, um, then the number of atoms we have in there is that. So if it's 5% red atoms and there are 100 atoms in the bucket, then we've got 5% times 100, that's 5 red atoms. Um, and that would be the number of atoms that are red in our bucket. Now that's uh, so many moles. If we divide it by Avogadro's number, then we'd have that many moles of red atoms in our bucket. So that's the red atoms. And that would be the number of moles. If we wanted to know how much they weighed, well, we'd multiply by the molar mass of our species X. So that's the molar mass of that species. Say it's hydrogen, that would be 1. If it's carbon, that would be 12, whatever it is. Um, so then if we added that up for all the different types of species, the total weight we would find would simply be the sum of that over all the possible species X. So we do a sum over all the possible species X of N divided by Avogadro's number times the composition in atomic percent of each species X times the molar mass of that species X from the periodic table. And that would give us our total weight. So that if we want to know what the weight fraction of red atoms is, we just divide this one by this one. And that would give us our, our weight fraction. So our weight fraction will then be, so that'll be C by weight, composition by weight of our species X will be equal to that divided by that. So we just do n over na times cxa molar mass of x divided by the sum over all the possible species x of n over na cA of each species x times the molar mass. And then you can see immediately that what we're going to do here is we're going to cancel out the n over n a, and that just gives us our final formula, and that's the weight fraction from the atom fractions. Um, and so let's let's do an example of what that looks like. If we do an example of what that looks like, let's just take our our formula and we'll write it up here. So we've got c w of x is equal to c a of x m x divided by the sum over all the possible species X of the atomic fraction times MX. So let's do an example. Let's do an example. Let's take a, a, a compound, say, or a phase. This is a very common phase we'll be looking at later in the course. This is Fe3C, which is called cementite. Um, and that we very commonly see in steels. Um, it's a carbide, so-called, of iron. And so if you've got uh, atoms in there in the ratio of three iron atoms to one carbon atom, in percentage terms, that would be 75% to 25%. If we want to convert that to um, weight percent, if you want to know the composition by weight of carbon now, then that would be the molar mass of carbon is 12.01 times 
25% divided by, now we've got to do our sum, so that's 12.01 by 25 again, sorry, 0.25, plus, uh, then we need to do the molar mass of iron, that's 55.85 times 0.75. And if you do the calculation for that, that comes out to be 0.65. 68, which is about 6.7 weight percent. So if you go and look at where Fe3C appears on a phase diagram where the composition is plotted in weight fraction, in weight percent, then Fe3C will appear at 6.7 weight percent carbon. Um, rather than the 25 it would be in atomic percent. And so because carbon is so much lighter, then the Fe3C appears at a much lower weight percentage of carbon. So that's one of the things. For some of these light elements, when you have them in phase diagrams, it looks like there's very little solubility for them in something like a pure metal, and it might be higher. We'll look at an example of that in a moment. Now, the other way around you can go is to go the other way. If you've got an alloy that's been given to you that's in weight percent, then you could go to atomic percent. So if we want to do that, we'll consider a bucket of atoms that's got a kilogram of alloy in it, say. Um, so if we take one kilogram of alloy. So that would be if somebody asked you to make up an alloy of 5% red and 95% black, you'd take um, whatever it would be, 50 grams of red material and 950 grams of black material. Mix them together, make your alloy. Um, you'd have to melt them and so on, but you know that's conceptually the idea. Um, it's like mixing things up when you're baking a cake. Um, so if we consider one kilogram of alloy, um, then we need to f figure out how many moles of each uh, atom we'll have. So if we take uh, the red species again, then we've got one kilogram times uh, the composition in weight of that species, species X, um, divided by the molar mass of that species X. So that's the number of moles we have. Um, and if we want to know the number of atoms, then we'd have to multiply that by, by Avogadro's number. Now there's a little thing to notice here. Avogadro's number is 6.022 times 10 to the 23 if you consider a mole of carbon atoms to have to weigh 12 grams, and it's 6 times 10 to the 26 if you consider a mole of carbon atoms to weigh 12 kilograms. Um, and it's just a, a difference depending on which you're quoting. It's one thing to be aware of. There's a little bit of non-standardization, because if you're really thinking about SI, everything should be in kilograms. But usually when you're at school, you think of a mole of carbon atoms being classically 12 grams, in which case Avogadro's number is 6 times 10 to the 23. But that's the number of moles we have if we're doing everything in kilograms. And then we can sum that up over all of the total species. So the total number of moles, oops, total number of moles over all species is the sum over all x, you know, one, two, three, four, um, of C composition in weight divided by the molar mass of each x. So that's the total number. And again, what, we, what do we want to know? If we want to know the composition in atomic percent, well, we take the fraction of the total that are red atoms or whichever it is. So we do a, a divide again. So the composition in atomic fraction is then just that divided by that. So that's CWX over MX divided by the sum over X of CWX over MX. So that's how we do it if we want to go from weight to atomic fraction. It's just the inverse of the, the other equation. So we'll write this guy up here again. So that's CXA is equal to CWX divided by MX divided by the sum over X of CWX over MX. Probably need to make my bucket a bit shorter. Um, so that's how you go from there to there. Well, now we'll do an example to look at 
how we use that in, in practice. So there's an alloy used in landing gear quite commonly, um, and that's called tie 10 vanadium, uh, 2 iron, 3 aluminium. It's very, very strong. It's got a, a strength of about 1400 MPa, megapascals, um, and it's very, very tough. So it's used quite widely in landing gear in things like the 787, the big truck beam that the wheels mount on. That's made out of an eight ton forging of Tie 1023. Um, well, sorry, that's in the uh, 777. The 787 uses a, a newer version of this alloy. So we don't, for the solvent, element, we don't say what it is because it's the balance. Here we've got 10, 12, 15 in total, so that's really 85% titanium. Um, that's the remainder of 100. So we've got 85 weight percent tie, and we've got 10 weight percent vanadium, 2 weight percent iron, and 3 weight percent aluminium in that alloy. Now, if you go through this calculation, which I'll leave you to do and check, and calculate the atom fractions, then you find um, that you get quite a different set of numbers. Which I'll um, so in atom percent, atom percent, we get a composition which is tie nine point three vanadium, one point seven iron, and five point two aluminium. And if you look at a periodic table, then the reason for that is that vanadium and iron are a little bit lighter than titanium, but they're on the same top row of the transition metals. But aluminium is very much lighter, so the atom fraction is very much higher than it is in weight. So this is about a 20th aluminium atoms, although it's only about a 30th aluminium by weight when you mix up the alloy. So there's quite a big difference between the two. Um, now, one question you'd ask, which, which would you prefer? Which would you prefer to specify your alloy in? So, the science happens in atom percent. And so, you'd have thought from a physics chemistry point of view that we'd prefer to do things in atomic percent. Now, on the other hand, when you make the alloy, you take 85 grams of titanium, 10 grams of vanadium, 2 grams of iron and 3 grams of aluminium, mix them up and melt them together. And so if you're thinking, well, I'm going to give this to my technician and ask him to go and melt it, um, you might specify it in weight fractions, and then he doesn't have to go and do the calculation that he might get wrong. So alloys tend to be specified, and phase diagrams tend to be specified in weight fraction. But the science is the atoms. So really, we should probably be doing the science in an atom fraction. So there is a difference, but conventionally most things are quoted in weight percent. And if you don't see it specified, the person who's not specified whether it was weight or atom has been naughty, but they probably mean weight percent. You should ask them, but if you can't ask them, it's probably weight percent. That would be the assumption to make if nobody specifies. If we take a, a more dramatic example of where it really does make a difference, we can look at... Um, hydrogen in zirconium. So zirconium is used in the um, fuel clad in nuclear reactors, in pressurized water reactors. Um, so you, you have a thin coating of zirconium metal around the uranium fuel, and that's got to contain all of the fission products that the fuel generates in operation. And zirconium is very corrosion resistant, but in the um, reactor atmosphere, in water at 300 plus degrees C, in the irradiation field, it tends to corrode. And when it corrodes, it takes on hydrogen. So, and it takes on quite a lot of hydrogen, actually. At discharge, after a few years in a reactor, you'd probably be at 500 parts per million of hydrogen. And when people say parts per million, that sounds like a, a, an atom number, parts per million. But usually, they'll actually mean parts per million by weight. So they would say something like zirconium containing 500 ppm, and if they've been good, they would say ppm by weight, of hydrogen. So if we want to know what that is in atom fraction, then we'd need to know the atomic mass of each. Hydrogen has a molar mass of 1, and zirconium has a molar mass of 
Um, so if we want to convert that to atomic, we've got a fraction of 0 0.00050, so 500 parts per million. So we can work that out. So that's 0 0.05 weight percent. So 0 0.05 weight percent. So it looks like a tiny amount, yeah? And if we want to convert that to atomic percent, then we'd say, okay, well, the, the number in atomic is then the number by weight, so that's 0 0.05 weight percent divided by a molar mass of 1, divided by, so I'm going off this equation, 0 0.05 divided by 1, plus 99.95, that's the weight percentage of zirconium, divided by 91.2. Now this is going to be a very small number com compared to this. So we'll just ignore this guy, the one we can forget about. That's approximately 100% if we make that back into 0 0.0005, just divide through by 100. And so we've got, we can say that that's equal to 0 0.0005 times, because that goes up to there when you deal with the fractions, 91.2. And so that is equal to 4.6 atom percent. So although you're only at 500 ppm by weight of hydrogen, because hydrogen's 100 times lighter than zirconium, that's actually nearly 5 atom percent. Nearly 1 in 20 atoms are now hydrogen atoms. So that's a very big amount of hydrogen, and it has a very dramatic effect on the properties, because when you cool the alloy down, it stops being in solution anymore, the solubility decreases, and precipitates out as zirconium hydrides, which are very brittle, and are very damaging to the mechanical properties of the fuel cloud. Um, so this isn't a problem in operation of reactors, it's a problem in storage and transport of spent fuel. Um, so that's really all I have to say. This is the key thing to remember. But the good news is you don't need to remember it because it's in the formula book. So in the Department of Materials, we give you a formula book for the exams, and they have formulas like these in them. They don't tell you what the symbols are. You need to know how to use them. But we're not very interested in you memorizing formulae and in penalizing your exams if you remember them slightly wrong. Um, we're mostly interested in, can you use them? Do you understand the scientific insights? Can you use those scientific insights to solve problems? We're not that interested in your memorization ability. So we give you these in a formula book, which you, which you can find online in WebCT. But before you go into the exams, you want to familiarize yourself with that formula book so that you can find formulae in exams. So you should go and get it, print it out, and carry it with you pretty much at all times when you're trying problems or trying things with tutorials. So when you come to the exams, you'll be familiar and know your way around. So that's it for this segment.